So today I brought back out the Talari XXX to talk about some upgrades I've done to it so far. We're going to be doing a comparison between Amazon and Warp 9 here pretty soon. But with that being said, I have all Amazon upgrades on this bike so far. Also, this vinyl is all done by me. A little bit of patience can go a long way. So I'll talk to you guys about how to, I guess, basically avoid those companies that are having pre-cut designs because I think doing it yourself is always a way to go. I also have a workaround for the RFID tag. With that being said, let's get this video started. Let's get on the trail and we'll talk all about the upgrades. So first let's talk about the elephant in the room, this RFID tag, which is a pain in the butt. Now there are some people that are figuring out how to program it to where you can use other tags, maybe even your watch. I haven't seen a successful way to be able to do the watch, but I do have a solution for it so far. So you could just do this. And, you know, then you risk losing it. But I end up finding this company on Etsy, I believe, which I'll link all of this stuff in the description below. Press this guy. Wrist is good. This product is called the Pocket Band. Now, a lot of people use it for running or some type of athletic type of stuff where you can put keys in there, money or whatever. I have another one right here that I'm going to give away to you guys. So tell me why you need it so bad in the comments of this video. And I will pick a lucky winner no matter what country, what state you're in. So with that being said, this thing is definitely the way to go. Uh, we're going to be using that today. That is the easiest fix I've found so far, the cheapest one so far. And I'll be linking this in the description below for you to be able to check out. The next upgrade will be a mirror. The mirror will also be in the description below. I decided to only put it on the left side because looking over my left shoulder, making turns and stuff, I'll probably put one on the right side as well after I clean up these cables a little bit more. So let's get out on the trail and we'll talk more about the handlebar, stem, and foot peg setup that we have here. And last but not least will definitely be the vinyl. Unfortunately, that ride got cut a bit short due to rain, so we're back here at the shop to talk about all the accessories. We already talked about the big elephant in the room, which is this terrible idea that Talaria did with this little key fob. I can kind of see how it is new, unique, and neat, but I can see how easily this thing can be a nuisance and get lost. And we already talked about the pocket band, which I think is awesome. Like I said, comment below why you need this thing so bad and we're picking a winner. There are other options out there. I've seen people bypass this with using a key feature like you would see in the Sting R or a Suron. Um, I'll try to find those videos and I'll put those in the description as well. But I'm not gonna be doing that to this bike. I'm gonna pretty much be using this pocket band as my accessory to be able to get on and off of the bike, I guess, unless I can try to figure out how to use the watch. Now, one of my biggest gripes with this bike, if you watch my original video, my overview of this bike when I first bought it, is the foot pegs. The foot pegs are terrible. They're just so tiny, so small. Now here's a good comparison showing the original ones versus the ones on Amazon. Now the ones on Amazon are way wider, way more grip to them as well. I mean, look how small these things are. And the ones on Amazon came just like this. They didn't have any spring assembly. I reused all the spring assembly and everything from the Talari XXX and it actually worked out really well, really easy to install. Now these things come with roughly 16 or 17 screws in there, I'm probably going to take out about half of them because I can't really move my feet at all, which grip is nice, but to where you can't really move your feet to reposition yourself isn't always the best option. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the mirrors. Now, the mirrors have two different mounting options. I ended up going with the handlebar mounting option versus the bar end mounting option, just in case I was to drop the bike. I didn't want to destroy the mirrors. Now, I'm probably going to put it on both sides, but I at least wanted to do it on the left side for right now to be able to see traffic as I'm making left turns. So with that being said, the mirrors are in the description below. I highly recommend these things. They are really, really top quality when it comes to build and craftsmanship, in my personal opinion. There's no plastic parts on those things. Next, we're gonna talk about the handlebar and stem combo. Now I'm six foot tall and that extra three inches of rise for the handlebars definitely makes a difference for somebody my height. I did go with a bit higher of a stem. I wanna say it's about an inch and a quarter height difference between the traditional stock stem, but there are two different options when it comes to reach, 47 millimeters and 52. 
Me personally, I have a setup on 52 because I do want to have a bit more reach out there. I have longer arms. So this definitely is a setup for me. I did not cut the steer tube of the fork because I don't know exactly which stem I want to go with at the end of the day. So I don't want to basically cut that and kind of be screwed at the end of the day. I am going to be switching out the front suspension and the rear suspension here in the coming days. So be on the lookout for that video. Now I talked about this in my install video for my tires, but these are the Kenda K26 tires that I got on Amazon. I went with these over the Shinkos just for personal look and design. These are 2.75 front and rear, and we're actually a pretty easy install. In my opinion, handle really, really well in wet grass. I mean, I just got stuck in the rain. So it handled really well there. Dirt, sand, gravel, all around really good tire. If you're looking for that install video, that's in the description below. And the link for these tires and the Shinkos, if you're interested, are in the description below. One of my favorite features is a nice little touch you can add to this bike, which is a license plate. Now this license plate isn't legal by any means, but it adds to that customization for your own electric bike. It costs in and around $18 and took about five to seven days to arrive. Now, last but not least, the vinyl. Now, there are companies out there that sell pre-cut designs for not only this bike, but the Tallair Sting R, the Suron X, and so on. I didn't want to do a pre-cut assembly just because I wanted to be able to kind of make it my own, like I said. I didn't see anything that was like this, and I bought this entire roll off Amazon. I still have plenty left over just in case I wanted to add on later or just change the design, or if I messed up, it was definitely the way to go in my opinion. If you get a pre-cut design like that, you pretty much got to be perfect, and I didn't want that added stress. It took about three or four hours, I'd say about three or four hours, and I just enjoyed the time. So with that being said, videos that are coming down the pipeline, I'm doing comparison between the Warp 9 setup that I just ordered, comparing it to this Amazon setup to see which one is really worth the value. Now, I am gonna be doing more comparisons with tires. I want you guys to comment below if you wanna see the Shinkos put up against this, maybe like a 25 mile test, kind of top speed range test. You let me know, put those in the comments. But I'm really excited to do a comparison on suspension high-end versus affordable. Be on the lookout for those videos very soon. If you guys have any suggestions, put them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.